Let's talk about Hamster Roll, a dexterity game inside a wheel. Welcome to Brains on Games. I'm Dr. Brian McDonald. In this episode, we're going to talk about a game that's been kind of a grail game for me. This is a game, I think I waited a year to be notified that it came in stock. And the reason for that is that it's an imported game from Europe. But right now, 25th Century Games is doing an import Kickstarter. So there's a few days left on the Kickstarter by 25th Century Games to get your hands on the English version of Hamster Roll. Now, Hamster, this is, this is the European version. So it, it has the European spelling. Now it's Hamster Roll, two words in English by 25th Century Games. This is the original edition. So, Hamster Roll is a game for between two and four players. Kids age seven and up can figure this one out. And games take half an hour to 45 minutes, but maybe less than that, depending on how good people are at playing this game. Let's take a deeper look at Hamster Roll by 25th Century Games. We're at my game table today because we're looking at this big wheel and I thought it would be a, a much better view to kind of see it from the side than the overhead camera that I usually use. But Hamster Roll is a light dexterity game. Your goal is to be the first player to get rid of all of their wooden pieces. So you play this game by placing your pieces on the wheel. If a piece falls off when you're adding yours, then you have to take that into your stack and that's another piece that you have to get rid of. You start hamster roll with this little cone at the bottom and the first player to play, the rule book says the player with the shakiest hands is the one who has to go first. Maybe that's an advantage. If they're shaky, then uh, they're not going to knock anything off on their first turn. But you begin by placing one of your pieces on the wheel. You probably want to get rid of the heaviest ones first. This is one of the biggest ones uh, in the stack. But you have to skip one space between the cone and your first piece. You can put your piece on the wheel any way that you want to put it and you can see that the wheel immediately is going to start to roll as you add these pieces. Now the next player could put their piece on the next barrier or they could add it to the same space that you've just placed yours in. The only rule here is that every piece that's added has to be placed on the rolling side of the wheel so you can't kind of balance it by placing it on the other side of that cone but also each piece has to extend further than the last one so if I put this blue piece in the same space I can't stack it like this because it doesn't extend further I would have to put it maybe this way to make sure that it does go further than the yellow one you could skip a space if you're feeling really daring and place one a little bit further along on the wheel but it's just going to keep rolling and rolling as you go uh, and pieces eventually are going to start to fall off and you can hear that sound so I mean why was this a grail game for me well I love dexterity games and I wanted something that was a, a little different from Jenga uh, and this one definitely fit the bill I saw pictures of it and I thought oh that looks like so much fun and I had a lot of fun playing this game the game is going to end immediately once one player has placed their last piece. So as, as, it, as the game progresses, it does get more and more challenging to place these things. And that cone in particular is going to start to lean over. Luckily, it has a little lip on the bottom, and that seems to help it to hang on to the barrier a bit uh, as the wheel fills up. Uh, but eventually, things are almost upside down, and it becomes super hard to place a new piece without knocking other things off. What skills are you working on when you play a game like Hamster Roll? Well, of course, this is a, a dexterity game. So we are talking about visual motor dexterity. I like dexterity games for kids, especially impulsive kids. You get instant feedback and you do have to be careful and patient. I always think, you know, as a psychologist, what do I tell people to do if they're stressed out or if they're impulsive? You know, take a deep breath, be aware of your body, slow yourself down think before you act. Well, th these dexterity games require all of those skills. So uh, I think it's not just about dexterity. It's also about body control. It's also about self-regulation uh, in order to place these pieces. You do get a little lesson in physics and balance maybe, but primarily we're talking about motor dexterity. And I think, like I said, self-regulation is a skill that you need 
to play, maybe even to keep yourself calm when you're knocking pieces off the board. Self-regulation is a skill that you need to play hamster roll. Final thoughts about my version of hamster roll. Th- well, this is a game that I'm, I'm glad I received it. It's a game that I, it's the kind of thing that just makes me laugh. One of the things I wanted to do when I got this thing in the mail was, was to play with my son who loves dexterity games and maybe film a playthrough of Hamster Roll because I thought that would be quite funny. But he came over and it was just at the end of exam period and then he had a fever. So he wasn't about to play any games, unfortunately. He's feeling better now though. But he, you know, he, was, he, he was run down from his exam. So I didn't get to play this with my son yet, but some friends did come over. Uh, my nephew came over to play it and... I had a great time. My nephew had a great time. You, you know, his dad was a little bit frustrated. He was having a bit of a harder time playing hamster roll. And he felt like, ooh, emotional kids would have a tough time with this one. And that's true. I think that's true with Jenga. That's true with any uh, of these kinds of games. It's frustrating when you knock pieces off, especially if you, you're unsuccessful turn after turn. So it could be frustrating. You do improve with practice, though. And there's clear evidence that that practice makes perfect in a game like this because you will get better at it as you play as long as you can keep yourself calm while you're doing it. So we're talking about a game where there's lots of laughs, there is a table presence that's a lot of fun. If I was playing this in a public space, everybody's going to want to see what you're doing when you're playing hamster roll. And it is like dexterity games are tense. You're kind of, everyone's holding their breath and then cheering if you do something fantastic. And boy, when that, when that wheel starts to roll, when you place a piece and you're kind of just hoping that nothing falls off, what a good time. Uh, so I had a lot of fun playing hamster roll. And I think this is a very, very, very good dexterity game when we're talking about just balancing Uh, it compares with suspend would probably be the closest the closest example i can think of of a game that's similar to hamster roll suspend is one where you're hanging wires kind of on a mobile you've got wires with little grooves in them and you're trying to balance them without knocking anything off and be the first player to get rid of all of your colored wires are there downsides though to hamster roll well there is one downside that has been i think it's been addressed in the new edition of the game and that is that this box will not fit in a Kallax cube it doesn't fit on my shelf I'm gonna to have to put it on the top of the shelf where there's a little bit more space for the larger game boxes Arc Nova is up there right now and and uh, I'm looking over at my game shelf Secret Hitler is is on the shelf is just because it's a game that sticks out too far I couldn't fit it in hamster roll is gonna be one of those that don't fit on the shelf but I think the 25th century games edition does actually fit in a cube so it's going to be maybe make it easier for people to store it but really that's the only downside maybe maybe other than if you don't like dexterity games i'm not sure that that this balancing game will will win you over (laughs) but we had a lot of fun playing it and even if you don't like these kinds of games what what fun it is to watch this thing it's so funny and tense when when the ball starts to roll so what i'm so glad that this game came in before the Kickstarter campaign ended. It was a grail game for me and and, uh, I'm gonna have a lot of fun playing this with my son. If you have any questions or comments, you can leave them in the comment section below the video. If you wanna meet up at at Breakout in Toronto in March, that would be a lot of fun. Uh, I'm already getting some messages from people who are hoping to meet up uh, and I'd love to see you Brainiacs. I'm trying out Brainiacs as a name for people who watch this show. I'd love to see some Brainiacs over at breakout in Toronto uh, on March 15th to the 17th. If you have any questions or comments though you can of course leave them in the comment section below the video. You can email me too at brian at brainsongames.ca. Brainsongames.ca is the website. That's where future episodes will go. Previous ones are up there already. Brains on Games is the X handle and the Facebook page and the Instagram feed so we're all over the place. And if you enjoyed this video and you want to be notified of future ones you can head on over to YouTube and click that subscribe button. Thanks for joining me and hopefully I'll see you next time.